As do many people who have fallen victim to the bottom of the bottle, I mostly drink to forget. It has always been a convenient way to check out of reality for a while, to just cease being responsible for my actions and phase out of the same reality as everyone else for a bit. Those of you out there who have either been at the bottom of that bottle before or have at least come close know what I mean. It's not the same as just drinking too much or being the guy who shows up to the party with a nice buzz going already, only to later take it too far and shit himself after passing out on the host's lawn. Real alcoholism is a much darker place. It's a place where you wake up and the first thing you want to do, after you throw your guts up of course, is to crawl right back into that bottle. The pain becomes a self-feeding cycle which you can't escape, but you'll drink more in order to get away from it anyway. I've been to that point several times in my life and brought myself back from the brink each time. I've never quit drinking entirely, but I've been lucky enough to never fall so far that I can't climb my way back out, even if it takes a few years. The thing about those shitty support groups, AA isn't the only one, surprise, surprise, is that they always tell you that the way to start recovering is to face the things you drink to forget about. Face them, drag them out, hold them up in the daylight and say, I'm not afraid of you anymore, as loud as you can until they shrink to a more manageable size. And that line of bullshit definitely works for a lot of people, just not for me. I'm haunted by shit that I can't just say I'm not afraid of. As long as I can remember, I've had these terrible, gruesome nightmares. At least a couple of nights a month, I'm overtaken by these insane visions, which feel so vividly real that I can do nothing but pour liquor down my throat to forget them. In these dreams, I'm hunted by a powerful monster. The monster is always very close behind me, so close that I can feel his hot breath on my neck and taste the excited sweat he secretes as he chases me. My fear only seems to make him more determined to catch me, and I run as fast as I can. The scenery is usually different. Sometimes I'm sprinting through a forest, dodging trees as I desperately urge myself to run faster. Sometimes I'm running through an urban environment, even clambering over fences and even on the roofs of houses in order to secure my getaway. Only rarely do I ever bother to spare a glance behind me, because I know that to look will mean certain death. When I do look, though, what I see is horrible beyond measure. Dark, sleek fur, claws the size of daggers, powerful sweat-slicked muscles rippling beneath the flesh which is covered in hair. But the worst thing is the eyes glowing yellow eyes which look positively sick with murderous intent. The pupils are the size of pinpoints, and I know that the only thing it sees is me. Inevitably, the beast catches me. I am never fast enough, though sometimes the chase goes on so long I feel my legs will catch fire beneath me. When I can run no more, the beast descends upon me. The claws tear my flesh from my bones, and before the last of my life slips away, I can feel the monster's jaws biting into me. As it begins to devour my shredded corpse, I fade into death. So yeah, I'm sure you can see why I drink. You might think the solution here is to go to a therapist, and believe me, I've been to them all. These dreams have been haunting me since my teenage years, and my parents nearly went broke trying to figure them out. Doctors have told me that I have everything from an overactive imagination to repressed memories of sexual abuse. None of their diagnoses, theories, or medications have even touched the dreams. They are always there. I started drinking in my late teens, and I am now pushing 30. The dreams have grown far more visceral, which may or may not have something to do with the liquid poison I tend to pour down my throat on a nightly basis. I'm not sure, but there is no way I can face going to sleep at night sober. Blacking out is the only way I can avoid laying there, trying desperately not to fall asleep, 
so that I can escape the dreams just once. My drinking has, of course, alienated me from all my family and former friends. When you drink to forget things, you tend to be an angry drunk. I've been in more than one fist fight caused by my own drunken stupidity, and I've woken up in more than one drunk tank as a result. It's not a glamorous life by any stretch of the imagination. I tend to move around a lot, too. Call me a cliché, but after spending too many nights running away from things, I guess some of that has spilled over into my waking life as well. After a few months, wherever I'm staying tends to start making me feel sick, and it's around that time I know it's time to move on. It's not like it's hard. You don't lay down too many stakes or get tied up with too many important relationships when you're a drunk nutcase who dreams about getting murdered by a demon every few weeks. So, why am I telling you all this? Well, something happened which has me a little freaked out. I've been staying in a town in the southwest for the last few months. I won't name it, and I've actually started to get things under control. I haven't been drinking too much, and I actually have a job right now. It had actually been about two months since I had a dream, and I was starting to feel like maybe things were going to even out for me. The place I'm staying is nice, and my neighbors don't glare when they see me. That changed last night, when I had one of the worst dreams I've ever had. It started as they usually do. I was already running, and I knew that I was being chased. The night around me had just a hint of crispness to it. With fall starting, the air has been far cooler than usual once the sun goes down. I could feel my sneakers slapping the asphalt hard with each step, my legs extending as far as I could get them, and my heart racing. I knew that I'd been walking down this street just minutes ago, a little nervous about the area of town I was in, but otherwise undisturbed. It was then that I became aware of a presence, in the same way that you will occasionally know when someone is standing behind you. The hairs on the back of your neck raise up, and you just know you're being looked at. Cautiously looking around, I'd see no one behind me. The street lights were few and far between, though, so I knew that it was possible there was someone else sharing the road with me. They could have just been outside of the yellowish circles. I started walking a little faster. Minutes later, I heard a low, guttural growl coming from what sounded like the yard of the house to the right. My head snapped over, expecting to see a dog in the yard, angry that I was disturbing it so late at night. I saw nothing in the yard. Again, I picked up the pace. The growl came again, still to my right, but higher up. I looked over again. And this time I could see the shape of something very, very large on top of the house. I couldn't tell what it was, but I could see that it was truly massive. I was so startled that I stopped dead in my tracks. I could tell that it was looking directly at me. It lowered its head, and I swear that its breath was so hot I could make out vapor trails as it touched the night air. I saw large shoulders flex as it brought itself down onto all fours, infinitely, slowly. It was at that moment I ran. The moment my feet moved, I knew I'd made a mistake. A piercing, shrill howl rang through the air, and out of the corner of my eye I saw the shadow leap from the roof. It covered an impossible distance, landing just on the other side of the fence separating the yard from the street. I pushed my feet off against the ground as hard as I ever have, launching into a sprint. My legs were strong and fast that night, and I moved with real speed. Still, I knew the thing was not far behind me. As I darted in and out of the street lights, small circle of illumination, I spared a glance behind me. What I saw pushed me further. It was huge, hairy, and horrible. A beast in all senses of the word, galloping at me on all fours, and despite my freakish pace, it was gaining on me. I pushed myself harder, my lungs beginning to burn from the exertion. I could hear the creature panting, and imagine drool falling from its jaws in what could only be anticipation of its kill. Inevitably, I was outclassed by the thing. 
As I neared the end of the street, already deciding to turn right at the intersection, the beast was upon me. It hit me hard, sending me sprawling. My hands shot out in front of me to break my fall, instead breaking my wrists like twigs and tearing the flesh from my palms. I cried out in agony. What felt like knives sunk into my back and the flesh and muscle was sheared away from my body. My screams turned to choked moans as blood filled my mouth and the world faded to black. I've had a lot of these dreams, hundreds, and they've all been bad. But this, this was the worst one yet. It felt so incredibly real. I could taste the blood in my mouth. But the severity of the dream is not why I'm posting here today. I'm posting because of what happened when I woke up. Head pounding from my standard hangover, I pushed myself up. I was laying on the floor in my living room, and my head was swimming. I stumbled to the bathroom, crouched down in front of the toilet, and vomited. Vomited a lot more than I should have. I don't tend to eat a lot when I'm drinking. It was then, as I looked down into the bowl, that I realized I didn't remember drinking the night before. I'd gone to bed shortly after getting off work, wanting to get a good night's sleep and get up early the next day. And with that realization came horror at what I saw in the bowl. A finger, a human finger, severed just below the knuckle. I screamed and threw myself back, hitting my head on the wall as I tried to kick my way away from the toilet and the insanity within. Getting to my feet, I stared down in the bowl. It was still there, and when I looked away, I caught my reflection in the bathroom mirror. My lips, chin, and chest were covered in blood and something else. Something that, upon closer inspection, turned out to be thick, coarse strands of fur. I didn't know what the fuck was going on until I came here to post this and hopefully talk to some of you about it. Now, well, let's just say that I have an idea of what's been causing my dreams. As I opened up Reddit, the first thing I was greeted by was a story from the city's local subreddit. I'll copy and paste the post for you, and that's where I'll sign off for now. I have a bottle of whiskey to get to the bottom of. Holy shit! Gruesome murder on the south side last night. Guys, I live over on the south side, and I woke up to some really nasty shit this morning. Someone was killed on the street just north of mine, and it was the worst thing I've ever seen. Blood everywhere, and the body was absolutely shredded. When I rode my bike past it, there were cops everywhere. I stopped and asked what was going on, and one of them told me they were investigating a death and that I should move along. Any of you guys have any info on this? They were calling it a murder, but I don't know, it kind of looked like an animal attack to me. It's been a long time since a wolf or a mountain lion or something wandered this far south. Seriously, what the fuck happened? <laughs>